21 years here at USF, you just start to learn a lot about yourself and the culture is way more important than the athlete themselves. And I think that's been the wonderful piece that has always kept me here at USF is Jesuit education, the type of kids that we're able to get, the melting pot that we live in. But if you don't cultivate it every single day, you can't be successful. And you look at last year's team, we had wonderful players and I'm proud of all those players, but it was the culture that gave us an opportunity to be successful. We stayed together, we believed in each other, and I think there's a good base of those players back this year that can help us take the next step and, and continue to build. But it's always been great for me as a coach to, to take players that have been part of this educational system here at USF and the success of the program and the building of the program and put them back into a coaching role where they can give even more. And I've been really fortunate to have Troy with me for 21 years. I've been really fortunate to have Matt with me for the time I've had him as a player and now as a coach. Two new coaches, Ryan Burke, junior college coach from College of uh, Marin who came here to USF and he's going to impact and, and have a great impact and then bringing back Alan Smoot, one of our former players that had success at the pro level is going to come in and be our operations director. Really fortunate as a coach to have people that understand the system, understand the culture, understand me uh, and, and can give that to the players and it just helps us learn at a much quicker pace. I've been really fortunate to have uh, a good Friday starter and I guess that's what you look at in college. And last year Ponticelli was, was remarkable. If you can get your starters to post in 13 to 15 starts a year, you can have a chance to be successful. Riley Ornito came from nowhere, you know, he's a walk-on uh, to a scholarship player, to a guy that wasn't pitching much, to all of a sudden he won his first eight starts at the Division I level and, and he was actually pretty dominant. He moves into that Friday role, which always helps us. Landon Barasa could be a Friday starter. He'll pitch on Sundays for us. Just because I've always talked about conference being one on Sundays, you're either 2-0 in a series, 0-2 in a series, or 1-1 and you need to win series. And I think Landon's mature enough to do that. The third starter, Grant Neshek, has an opportunity to take that starting role. Uh, Breck Eichelberger, the freshman, has a chance to take that starting role. So we really feel like we have four really solid starters in that position. The bullpen shakes out pretty well, you know. Joey Steele, obviously, he's had a good summer and a good career, and we see him at the back end of the bullpen. Grant Young, who's been really good for us, I think he's going to be able to give us some really good innings uh, in the bullpen, whether that's middle relief or at the end of the game. But we feel like the core of players, you know, Daniel Slominski, who's been a starter in our program and has battled injuries, if Daniel gets healthy, he's as good as anyone and he could move into the Saturday role and then Nishak and Eichelberger and still could help us close games out. And then you think about Benji Post. He won seven games for us two years ago. He was hurt all last year. If Benji gets healthy, he can move into a middle relief role or he can move into a, a, a receiver role for us. And then you look at the two freshman left-handed pitchers, Hecker, and um, you look at Koplama, they can really be guys that could, could help us. Jared Washburn is a kid we brought in, a junior college player that, that we think can be very good. So I, I like the mix of pitching. I think that's our strength, is our depth, one through 12 of the pitching staff. Catching situation is great for us. Last year, that's a big piece of what happened to us. Thomas was Riley Ornito's permanent catcher, and he won those first eight games with Thomas catching for him, and then Thomas broke his hamate bone. And I think that had a lot to do maybe with Riley's flow and confidence. Uh, Riley Helland has been our catcher over the last two years, and, and he'll continue to do that. Um, you know, Rob Emery, who's improved greatly over the summer and, and over the year, he has a chance to help us. And then Hopkinson has a chance to really help us. We have four catchers where we may be able to rotate pinch hitting roles and, and get guys in and out and match up late in the game. And uh, I really feel like that's somewhere where we've gotten a lot better in our program. And I'm really pretty excited about that. Jack Winkler, coming back as a sophomore, will be our starting shortstop. Last year, he did a great job at third base, a position he hadn't played, but his natural position is shortstop. 
He's really blossomed into a player. He continues to take his game to the next level and improve not only offensively and defensively, but the, the way that he sees the game, the maturity that he has towards the game. He, he's had a remarkable run here as a freshman to play almost every day, so he's kind of going to bolster us there at short. The third base situation, Jordan Barkas has really improved over the year. And uh, Ricky Yarada, who's a great teammate, and, and someone that could help us at third, he could help us at short, he could help us at second base. When you look at that dynamic, that, that's probably something that, that can really help us. If Jordan can do what we think he's capable of at third base, it's really gonna help us get another hitter into the lineup. We have many of options with uh, Cordero possibility of playing there at second base. Jason Kresge, who's the best defensive first baseman uh, that I've ever coached, you know. He, he's gonna have a chance to impact games late at first base. He's got great leadership skills. He can really bunt. He puts together good at bats. That's a senior that, when you look at it, if he understands his role and really executes his role, that's something that could really help. Kyle Nell is a freshman kid that redshirted last year that will probably have an opportunity to to win the starting job at second base. And then Grime is a kid that, that could play third, play second. He's got a chance to really impact us, and I think as the year progresses, I think that Grime will really get in there and, and do his job. When you talk about the outfield here this year, that's the most exciting piece that we have. It's also a piece where there's six players in that outfield, and I gotta figure out how to play six guys at three positions. But Jovetic has really come on. Uh, he had a good freshman campaign. He had a good summer. He, he's had a really good fall. He's a guy that has so many tools and can impact the game, not only defensively, but offensively. Jacob Westerman, I think Westerman has a chance to, to play every day. So Jovetic and Westerman right now, I see them uh, splitting time in right field or in the DH role. And then Tyler Villaroman has improved immensely in, in a year's time, and he's going to be a very good player in this conference. He'll start in center field. John Allen, who could play center left or right, he'll start every day in left field. Um, Jake Munoz, a junior college player that we brought in, is a very good player. He may have to play first base or DH. Uh, you know, and then Harris Williams, the young freshman kid, he's got a chance to really help us with his bat left-handed. Um, so that, that's a difficult task for me, but that's a good problem to have, is to have that many quality players in that outfield, and I think that's, that's really exciting for us here. This year, I feel like if we pitch like we're capable of, I think the offense has a chance of scoring us runs and enough runs to give us a chance to win games. So, like the mixture, I think the only question for me is will we play good enough defense all the way around the field in order for that offense to take shape? But when you think about the weapons that we have from being able to steal bases, being able to have contact players, being able to have some power in that lineup, guys that could actually get a ball in the gap and really run, I think we're going to be a very exciting team.